What's up, Squadron? Aviation has given me a ton of amazing experiences. And more importantly, it's introduced me to a whole new family of friends. Join us tonight, because we're cleared direct for some hangar flying. I'm Ryan Dombrowski, and this is Super Aero Live. What is up, Super Aero Squadron, Av Geek, Airplane Nerd friends? Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, sorry, again, I've already seen in the chat people are like, Oh, who gave you permission to take a week off? I didn't want to take a week off. I was just uh, on a film shoot doing some freelance work and I couldn't get it. I was going to do like a remote from my phone and then the mic on my phone is busted because I dropped it. It's all super dramatic. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's Wednesday night, and it's time for Super Arrow Live. Before we get it kicked off with our guest, obviously, you guys got to help me out. Do the sharing thing. Do the dingle-dangle notification bell. Do the like thing. And I just want to say a big thanks to all my uh, Patreon supporters who make this thing possible. You guys are awesome. Uh, especially those of you who are like, whoa, like, what can we do to help? I was like, there's nothing you can do. I'm just in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. Uh, anyway, okay, so uh, no show last week to talk about, but I hope you were checking out uh, EA. has got all this Spirit of Aviation Week stuff, and my face is kind of all over it. Weird flex, but uh, go check out <laughs> the, the has-been, they call it the has-been panels. It's like former demo pilots, Air Force demo pilots. Uh, they like make fun of me in that one. So uh, go check that one out if you haven't. And uh, next week, I'm pumped. We've got Elliot Seguin, the test pilot, uh, is going to be on here. <laughs> so that's going to be crazy too. Uh, anyway, uh, lots of fun things going on. Let's get this thing kicked off here. I got a new friend. Well, my internet friend, Nick. Hey, there he is. How's it going? Thanks for uh, Thanks for making the time to be on the show tonight, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Looking forward to this. 
I well, me too. So we met we met because of this YouTube internet thing and we've been chatting and you've got I mean, I don't want to like spoil the whole sh whole show, but you're like Mr. Photographer. I am a photographer. I would not say Mr., but I am a photographer. I'll say that much. <laughs> so we're going to talk a lot about a lot of fun stuff tonight. I, you hang out and you watch the show. You know, you've, I've seen you in the chat, but let's say hi to some of our friends real quick before we get started. Waukesha Pilot may or may not be here. Dark Arrows on uh, our friends with the experimental build uh, going on in Madison, Wisconsin. Super dope. Zach Sherman, buddy. Hope you're doing well with your training. Brian's here. Marty's here complaining about two weeks. Get over it, buddy. Uh, 782 Papa's here. Uh, 782, uh, obviously, next week with Elliot will be a real interesting show for you. And also, the week after that, uh, Home Build Friends, uh, Charlie Becker from the EAA has said he's going to be on. I mean, it's two weeks out. but that So it'll be a Home Builds a little bit this month. That'll be kind of cool. Ryan Krieger's here. Uh, Navy MT2 Aviators here. Good evening. Good to see you. Man, everyone's here. This is so cool. Sarah Clucky's here. She started a home built air aircraft build this past weekend, I saw on Instagram. Uh, Krieger says, when will four uniform Victor make an appearance in the intro? It's actually in the, uh, if you mean the, the intro lobby, uh, relatively soon. I gotta record a good like sunset or something on that aircraft, but it'll be in there. Otherwise, it's actually in the intro. Uh, Waukesha Pilot says longest intro ever. Uh, yeah, man, but jokes on you, you still show up for it. <laughs> All right, that's a uh, Wolf Accords here. Gary Smith's here. Outinsides here, dude. We got like gang is all here. It's so good to be back. And uh, Mr. T fifty one. Some names I haven't seen. Maxim's here. This is awesome. Guys, so excited for you to be here. And Nick, that was very patient of you. Well, I just rattled off a lot of names. Yeah, but they're friends. They're all, yeah. We got, we got a shout out to Noah, too. I uh, I got a message from him, and he is riding the storm out on the East Coast and has no power. Yeah, so, no. yeah, I... Uh, I I got a message from him. He said that he's no power, and I said, Noah, no, for you guys uh, uh, who don't know, Noah's usually in the chat uh here and there and he has no power but he's safe he told me he was safe and that's all that matters he can watch a, he, he can watch this on a cell connection uh <laughs> at a later date <laughs> at a later date <laughs> so here's what i want to do i you sent me a video nick and this uh uh this i'm surprised you have any hair in your head as a little teaser for this but for people who don't know you or don't know what you do I thought I could just play this little video you sent me, and they would get a real good sense of who you are. So I'm gonna play this real quick, and then we'll we'll dig into aircraft photo aviation photography. You lived! I did. But uh, the whole haircut thing you were mentioning, I uh, I didn't do that twice. I'll say that much. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Zach, Zach Sherman says, dang. Uh, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about what we just saw. <laughs> well, at uh, Stearman Field, where the, uh, I don't know if the ACCAs or ACAs or whatever you want to call them were uh, two weeks ago, uh, that's kind of my home base where I go shoot a lot, got a lot of friends out there and whatnot. But uh, literally a year ago today, um, the B-17 uh, marked up as Yield Pub uh, made a trip to Stearman Field and we're doing a ride flight. And at the end of the field, there's a displaced threshold and then, then kind of a county highway and then a ditch. And I just thought, you know what? That ditch is safe. I've never seen anybody uh, hit the ditch. And um, so that's where I went and had my GoPro on my head. Um, forgot to hit record. But I took my cell phone and threw it in the grass right in front of me just to see what would happen. Put it on slow-mo mode and um, just waited for it to get close. And um, the feeling of a B-17 that close to your head... Um, like I said, I didn't do it twice. 
Um, in fact, none of the photos that I took, because it was just way too close, way too fast, and I finally gave up out of fear. Um, but still made for really cool video, so... <laughs> That, I mean, that's super cool. I'd have never had anything that big that low over my head. But if you guys um, checked out the, the Cubs to Osh video I launched a couple weeks ago, there's a shot of, like, a J3 coming over uh, the camera. And I will say that, similar to you, I definitely, like, I, like, instinctively hit the deck. Like, in the raw footage, like, the camera's, like, looking really good. And then yeah. you, you just hear me, you hear like a thump as I hit the grass, and then the camera, because it wasn't well balanced on the tripod, just kind of like, <laughs> like <laughs> goes skyward. <laughs> so I I understand. I understand why you wouldn't uh, wouldn't do that twice. Yeah. And, and a lot of it, for, for the sake of uh, safety and whatnot, it's, it was much safer than it looked. So... Um, it was some smoke and mirrors there, but uh, definitely uh, was an experience that I'm glad I had once and uh, probably glad I won't do again. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about things that you've done that make me uncomfortable later. I'm not saying you're, you're <laughs> unsafe, but uh, you get because of your uh, I've skipped some stuff here because I got so excited about the B-17 video. Who are you? <laughs> like I said, I'm just a guy. Uh <laughs> But I'm a guy that was uh, was raised in a good family. I was raised around aviation. Um, when I, I think I was two months old, took my first airplane ride, um, and that bug just kind of kind of stuck. And um, I, I grew up with it. My my grandfather on my mother's side is a pilot. He's been a pilot forever. He's been going to Oshkosh forever. Um, my dad uh, flew uh, on helicopters in the, in the Navy. And um, his dad also worked for Boeing and uh, I want to say Convair, a whole bunch of companies um, after World War II uh, doing all this stuff. So I'd just say I kind of grew up in an aviation-minded family and very supportive family for that matter. But uh, as, I, as I grew up, I don't know if you've got the picture ready to go or not. Oh, but, sure. I got um, some photos, man. Here, let, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me load up um, some photos here. Yeah, so my uh, that'd be my my grandfather and my grandmother and my mom, and that was my first trip to Oshkosh. And uh, you know, just kind of growing up through the ranks, I um, just decided, you know, one day that I was going to um, work on getting my pilot's license. I didn't really know what didn't really know what I was getting into, but just decided that that was going to be time to do that. And that guy right there, um, he really, he'd been, he'd been flying forever and just hung it up a couple of years ago. But, um, about the time that I was in the middle of my training, he called me up and said, you know, we're going up to Oshkosh and got a spare seat. Do you want to go? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And, um, things have, I would say never been the same since, you know, I, but prior to that, I, I was really infatuated with what I was doing in aviation, but didn't realize that the community was so big. Sure. Um, it was just kind of, you know, an army of one at the time that I was aware of. And, um, so through that sense of community, you know, it's just, it's kind of grown from there. Um, but you know, kind of the side story along with, with the photography side, right around the time when I was, um, when I started to learn to fly, I had bought my first camera and I literally had no idea what I was doing with it. Um, I happened to go to an air show that was local here, um, but I'll take my camera. I thought I invented aviation photography. Come to find out there's a couple other people that do it as well. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny, uh, you know, go along the way and, and um, progress and, you know, and uh, what you do and what you're capable of and whatnot. And you realize just... I mean, it's almost an infinite number of people out there that um, have that same passion. And um, so, you know, I mean, kind of fast forward, I don't know, 10, 12 years later, you know, I'm, I'm here today doing photography and flying as much as I can. And my favorite part is just kind of hanging out with my friends and, and um, enjoying this community. Speaking of flying. Yeah. So <laughs> one thing I forgot to mention, you know, I it was about the year before I got married when I decided uh, to work on my license and 
my soon to be wife was nothing more than supportive of that and has been the whole time. And, uh, so that would be, that would be her on the, on the left. And then my two boys in the back and this picture, I didn't even realize it until I was looking at my time hop today. It was actually taken two years ago today. Hey, so that was their first ride in the back of a, in the back of a GA airplane. So, and is that, it's hard to, I'm guessing a Cessna. That would be a 172 N model. That I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, for you, uh, I think Uncle Victor for for Uniform Victor is uh, an N model. I probably should seems know that. Seems to be like one of the most popular older models of Cessna. It seems. And then you got to bring and, the kids into the yeah, into exactly. both sides. You know, of when it. you're uh, when you're going out uh, trying to get a get a little photo shoot done, and I mean, you're a dad. You know how it goes. You can't uh, can't just leave the house at any any time you want. So sometimes you got to take one. You leave the other. What have you? So. This day we took our Play-Doh with us, went out to the Kansas Aviation Museum out by our house here in Wichita, and uh, snapped some photos with uh, some uh, some fun-looking clouds and a B-47. Which, separately, like, B-47, uh, you don't see that every day. That you do not, except uh, for in the movie Strategic Air Command, which also happened to make a stop in Wichita. <laughs> I feel like this entire conversation between the two of us is just going to be like a lot of like random, like a random, a lot of random, random facts, random facts like that. So, uh, that, so yeah, so you got, I mean, you got this beautiful family, you've got the, uh, supportive wife, which I think all married aviators have, Absolutely. Uh, and then, and then. You talked a little bit about, you know, this is you kind of in your element. Yeah. And and I you sent me a couple of photos of you working. So, like, here's you, like... I don't know that that one right there was actually working. I mean, that let's was call a, it work. Yeah, we can call it work, <laughs> but I was... Uh, that was my first B-17 ride, so... And again, that was a year ago today. So That's awesome. That was, that was pretty slick. The one thing that was interesting about that one was uh, they were like, yeah, you can stick your head up out the out that hole right there but they said don't have anything loose because you won't be able to hang on to it so you notice i was ducking a little bit there but very cool experience yeah i still haven't ridden the b17 but i I really want to give it a go and then you've also had you've gotten to do this i did that was my very first uh warbird ride just kind of one of my aviation tips uh i'll I'll go ahead and and uh, spoil that one but uh is be a good person and with that you know taking care of taking care of other people sometimes uh things get past your way that may not otherwise so yeah and the camera helps yeah that it does at least i've got something to uh to deliver on the back end yeah absolutely so okay so i think a lot of people maybe don't know your name uh but they know your work and this is the photo that i've seen all over the place of yours yes um i bet everyone in the chat has seen this photo that would be my friend doc and uh if anybody doesn't know doc is a b29 it would be the one of two airworthy b29s and uh it was built in wichita flown and put out in the california desert as a target and then um rescued and restored back in Wichita and now currently lives in Wichita. And um, I got kind of hooked up with with them right around the time that um, that their first flight was back in 2016. Uh, I wasn't wasn't helping out before that. I, I certainly wish that I would have, but uh, at any rate, I mean it's it's never too late and um, great organization of people and um, we wound up uh, having a night run with Doc, which to, I think, nobody's done that before with a B-29 that we were aware of. Not, may not be may not be 100% right on that, but that's the that's kind of the story that uh, that we've got. And uh, it was part of a, a, a International Society of Aviation Photography uh, workshop and um, also just kind of a partnership with Doc's Friends, who's the organization that, um, that runs Doc and... Um, but it was just a very cool experience. Had about 15 minutes um, in the middle of the night, and they ran the engines up, and we had, uh, I want to say, about 5,000 watts of light. 
uh, from light towers all over the place. And um, then we were given a full moon behind it. So one of my favorite photos I've taken. Yeah, I mean, that's epic. The story of it is epic as well. Uh, people in the chat like it. Too. Sarah likes it, at least. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the other thing that I think, you know, remarkable to me uh, as I look through your work is you have, I mean, certainly just like a lot of really impressive photos. But when I look at photos like this, you've, you've the way that you play with light, um, and we'll talk about that more probably a little bit later, I think is just really impressive. This photo in particular, I like the way, you know, you've got the the cockpit, uh, that goldish tinted cockpit kind of being augmented by the, the golden hour light there. And I, I think the other thing that people might be impressed with is just like some of the like more unique or interesting framings that you'll, you've been able to capture uh, this one blew my mind. I'd, I'd never seen this photo before of yours, and it just totally struck me when I was digging through everything you sent me. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's one of those things that I've at least been doing it long enough now that um, just kind of want to try something different. And, you know, it, it feels like, you know, 70% of the time it fails with what you thought it was going to be, but, you know, that... 30 or less percent chance that it actually happens really pays off. And sometimes you just got to take some risks and in, in what you're doing. And, um, this, this one's actually, I mean, one of those examples for sure. We were, uh, in a 172 as a photo ship and I really wanted to try to get this hard pull with the pits and try to get some of the, uh, wingtip vortices in the background and trying to sort out the how of this, not to mention the fact that a 172 is not the world's best photo ship. Um, because you wind up actually sitting in the left seat so that you can sling the camera over your left shoulder and shoot out the window. But you've also got landing gear in the way and whatnot. So this is uh, Brian Carell, who's a, uh, an acro performer, and he uh, he just kind of got down on the deck and pulled hard and climbed right up at us and leveled out at, in a safe location. And um, it was, you know, it, it couldn't have turned out any better than I could have even imagine, but it, you know, so much of it had to do with his flying skills and my, my, uh, photo ship pilot, uh, Greg, you know, keeping us everywhere that we needed to be and whatnot, but. Yeah. And I, I think that's, you know, I, yeah, there, we should talk about photo ships more in a second here. I just want to get to some of these, like, these are the, like this, I want to buy from you and like put in my office Sorry, this is going to be a lot of me like drooling at your photography, and I apologize if that makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that but, one I got really lucky on. That was um, uh, at Air Venture this last year. Apologize for my dogs uh, jingling in the background here. Oh, no, don't worry uh, about it. No um, one cares. Does anyone yeah. care? No one cares. All right. If you care, don't leave a comment. <laughs> uh, we, uh, my friend Ryan Tykosh and I, um, we were both volunteering for EAA, and um, found what we called our spot that was out kind of by the hold line clear at the north end of the field and the nice part about what that brought was a totally different angle than i've ever seen an air show at um got lots of people relatively close to us but diving into the box instead of the shot that i've had for so many years that's you know at show center with the plane you know basically just a side shot and uh so had a had a blast of a time doing that so, and maybe that, I'm, we're, I was going to ask you more formally a little bit later about what are your, like, top tips for photography? And we have a couple of things that you sent over for examples we'll get into in a minute. But it, I wonder, is that, like, in a, as people think about doing either photography uh, or, um, or even videography at, like, air shows or whatever, uh, is it, is positioning a good tip for people? It's actually one of the tips that I wrote down here. Oh, did I um, spoil your idea? No, it's okay. I think it's a great time to talk about that. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, positioning is a great word for it. I wrote it down as move around because I'm simple minded like that. But, you know, I've, I've been going to air venture for, for years now. And, you know, many of those years, I always crowded the middle. 
because that's where everybody was and that's where it looked like it made the most sense. And um, the last two years, you know, and I, I feel like I started to kind of get a little bit better about my planning and what I was trying to accomplish for that matter. But I started exploring, you know, clear out on the edges and, and, you know, basically move around and get, get different angles on things that you haven't seen before. And, you know, a lot of times you see a lot of the same aircraft, but having a, you know, a fresh angle on it is, is really awesome. And, um, you know, a lot of the airports that I go to and shoot at, um, I've, you know, I've explored them about as much as I can, but I'm always looking for a new angle on something. And, uh, were you, uh, were you at Oshkosh last, uh, last year on Saturday for the night show? Uh, I think, I can't remember if I noped out. I had been shooting all week and I can't remember, uh, if Ryan, uh, who's in the chat and I, I can't remember if we just noped out Saturday cause we were so tired or not. I think that was, that was the one that I think I would remember the Raptor apocalypse. Yeah. I think I the, probably uh, missed that. The, uh, the chicken fingers clouds and, uh, and lots of afterburners and pyro and whatnot. And it was just, uh, it was one of those things that for a twilight show at, at air venture, um, I've been, been around them for, for a long time. And, it just seems like anytime I'm there, a small cloud bank comes up and ruins the what would have been awesome light. Um, but 2019 was was not the case when it held true, and we just had just this fantastic golden hour is not the best way to describe it because, I mean, it was just orange everywhere and gave a different look to anything I've ever seen. Yeah, it's ins- I mean, it's insane. I think I would have remembered that. I would have remembered that. I, would, I, I think I, would. I, think I- I think I noped out. Uh, here's another one of yours that just like could be should be on my in my office wall. Uh, make that happen. I'm pretty sure this is not Osh. That is definitely not. That's McConnell Air Force Base uh, here in Wichita. And um, funny story about that one. I was invited out by uh, the base public affairs, and we were supposedly going to catch. Uh, this was I want to say the fourth KC-46 that was arriving on base. Um, and we were supposed to be positioned where we were for it to land right over our heads. And the longer we waited for it to come in, we realized it's going to the runway right next to us. And so that was a just a huge fail on the on the part of the arrival shots. But then they back taxied down the runway right at us with just kind of dreary clouds and um, just, I don't know, it, it needed a little black and white treatment, but it turned out pretty awesome. Yeah, it's super stunning. Okay, so let's let's get to some photos. And I see some folks in the um, in the chat. You guys are talking about having some connection problems. I apologize. Uh, everything on my end, the like bandwidth stats are good. So I'm assuming you should call YouTube right now and complain to them about your connection issues because uh, we are. Ban- like blowing the bandwidth off the door is no problem right now, according to this thing over here. Uh, okay, so let's talk about. Uh, and, oh, well, we, let's say I had a, com- a couple of pokes. Someone just showed up and said, "Hey, I learned how to do this." Who was that? Nate, Nathan, Gingles or Jingles? I don't know. He says, "Hi, Nick." He must Hi, know Nate. you. You know that he guy. Does. I do. There you go. Did I pronounce his name correctly? I, well, you said both, so <laughs> I had a, I had a, yeah. So I guess I got it. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some other love coming in for you in the chat here. Full disc is here, and uh, yeah, and people are having trouble with the stream. I don't know. Just keep refreshing. Give me more views, guys. Uh, <laughs> all right. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, this section of, of the work you sent me, I'm going to call it uh, photos that make me uncomfortable. And this first one's a little tame. I'm going to move your wind over here. Uh, and by tame, I mean like, you know, that everyone's kind of, it looks like they're where they're supposed to be. Yeah. So the funny part about that one, you know, I, I caught it. I saw number five, they were leaving out to go, uh, inspect the place and 
I shot them all the way down the runway. They did the hard pull. I thought that was cool, but I didn't realize the, uh, the buggy there, um, didn't really know that it was coming. And, um, I actually, uh, caught up with the gentleman that was driving that and he gave me the full story and offered me a full tour and whatnot. And, um, I was actually going to take him up on that this year and then COVID happened and that didn't happen. But, uh, he, uh, he said they literally, they didn't have a clue it was coming. They didn't just, you know, you're on the front side of a jet. You can't really hear it for that matter. Right. And by the time it was gone, they, uh, were a little surprised, but that was just a lucky shot. That's all that was. Vape nation. Uh, this one makes me particularly uncomfortable. Again, this is not your fault, but, <laughs> but... So the ditch on the other side of that truck is where I was at during, uh, when the B-17 flew over. So this is Stearman Field, same place where the, uh, the awards were a couple weeks ago. And this was the, uh, 195 fly-in. And just, you know, it's one of those... I don't know if you call it poorly timed or well-timed photos that just looks like he's right on top of the truck, but in reality, he's not. No, yeah, he's in front of it, right? He's yeah. he's, he's... But still one of my one of my uh, more interesting shots that that gets a lot of comments because it just just totally got lucky that it looks like the tires right sitting on top of the truck. Well, and I think we've all seen that uh, we've seen that photo or that video of like an airport with a similar, maybe it is this airport where like a Cessna came in and like lost its gear on the top of a yeah, truck. But not this airport, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You guys seen that in the chat? Yeah. yeah. It like comes it's in a student pilot. If I remember right. And like they plop, I don't think it's the main, right? The main yeah. gear gets like cut off. Cause he like yep. clips the NSUV or something. Yeah. yeah uh, no, thanks. <laughs> so, so Zach's asking about lenses, and actually on Instagram, I think Dark Arrow asked on Instagram, like, if you have a favorite lens that you use for this stuff? I do. Uh, uh, yeah, Dark Arrow asked, what size lens do you typically use for your shots? So, typically, the, the lens that I own that I get to use um, is the Sigma 60-600 Sport. Um, it is... I, I was a big fan of the 150 to 600, had it for quite a while, and um, finally upgraded to the 60 just because of just I get a little bit of extra on the wide end. Um, but it's it's tack sharp. It's amazing lens for, I can't remember, it's less than two grand for 600 millimeters worth of lens. And uh, Sigma does a great job with it. It's got great image stabilization. Um, but that's pretty well my go-to for, for air shows, um, except for when I'm volunteering up at uh, air venture for EAA and they've got a, uh, 500 prime, I think 4.5, if I remember right, that, um, that I have access to that's, um, I wish that I owned one of those, but I'd have to sell the car and the kids or something like that. And, uh, so I, I live with the Sigma, but it's, it's a fantastic lens. I mean, as far as like I said, bang for the buck and, and sharp images, you're not going to get any better than in my opinion, the, the Sigma 60 to 600. I mean, and I think it's important for people to understand that, like, photography, like, that's serious glass. Like, yeah. anything that, like, like, I don't think I own anything. I mean, obviously, I'm doing mostly video, uh, and I, you know, the stuff that I do, it, uh, I mean, professionally on set, we'll, we'll get mega lenses sometimes, but for my personal stuff, you know, the most I've got is a 70 to 200 with a doubler, so right. I can go to 400. So that's, I mean, that's not nothing. Uh, yeah. For me, that becomes like, and I, well, maybe it's just my skill, right? Like, I, that becomes super unwieldy for me when I'm, like, at Oshkosh trying to, like, shoot, like, telephoto stuff sure. unless I'm, like, on a tripod or, like, you know, mounted up on something, so. Yeah. Well, um... Yeah, I'll get into that later. But I was I was okay. gonna I was gonna almost break into one of the tips, but I was like, ah, I'll wait just a right. wait just a bit. But uh, but yeah, it's it is unwieldy. And uh, seriously, leading up to Air Venture last year, I knew that I was gonna have access to the lens again that I really wanted. And not only is it heavy, but it's really long too. So you just wind up having, um, you know, really holding your uh, holding it out there a long ways, and it really makes your shoulders tired. So I seriously spent. Know about the six weeks leading up, to kind of just doing shoulder exercises, just trying to 
you know, make sure that I was in shape for, for that. Cause I didn't want to get through half the day and be, you know, complaining to myself that my arm's tired. So that's kind of the reality of the situation. <laughs> that is dedication, man. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I, yeah, I've never, I've never worked out for a shoot, but, but I should cause I get tired fast. Um, I want to just finish up some of these goofy, goofy photos or thing they were they aren't goofy but things that i thought were interesting kind of th- these like ones that made me go ah! uh here's another one just because uh oh i put you in the wrong spot here you are uh, what i love about this is that whoever's doing the pumpkin drop is like the door is open and that's basically a rudder they're basically turning the plane yeah this uh this is more of a the wonderfulness that is Stearman Field. And, uh, you know, right around uh, Halloween time, they have a pumpkin drop. And I didn't catch it, but one of these passes, somebody bounced a pumpkin, and it hit so hard that it knocked Mr. Airport guy there just clean off the tarp. And uh, it's, it's pretty fascinating to watch. I've seen all sorts of shenanigans that have happened at these pumpkin drops. But, uh, yeah, always fun to go to, for sure. That just I just love the, like, dedicate like we do a flower drop competition at Timmerman field. And, but like, you know, we, it's only like the projectiles like this big and you could just like put it out the window. You have to like, I don't know. I've, I just, I've got one sequence of shots from a couple of years ago that somebody pitched it out the window and you see the shot where they're throwing it and then the pumpkins out of their hand. And then it's right on top of the wheel pant and then it's up again and then it's down again. And uh, I, I don't know if it broke the wheel pan or not, but uh, just kind of one of those things that just makes you cringe from the ground. For sure. Uh, but also, uh, I think I agree with you, uh, Navy Aviator. Like, uh, got to check this field out. <laughs> Sounds it's, like there's just a lot of shenanigans. It's fun. It uh, That's kind of where I go to hang out just on the weekends and whatnot. I, great people out there. Lots of... Lots of steermen on the field. Uh, there's a restaurant and bar on the field. So, but you're literally. I mean, you can see where the planes are parked there on the side. That's where you're at. You stand awesome. there, get all the all the views you want. That's awesome. Here's the last one I wanted to share, just from the list. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So again, that's the same uh, Brian Carell uh, pits, and this was actually the air show that I met him at. And a friend of mine that was a friend of his asked if I wanted to go out and and catch the uh, the ribbon cut and i mean yes of course i do and they had uh, a bunch of airmen out there holding the uh, the ribbon because this was at the mcconnell air show and i mean he was just down cutting the weeds so yeah kinda, i kind of reminds you of north by northwest yeah uh yes that's exactly actually where my brain went uh i studied north by northwest in film school and uh, I was an undergrad and there were grad students. We were all working on like a, we like analyzed that scene with the, the famous like airplane in the field scene. And the grad students had like a shirt made up. This is like how big of a nerds we were that actually like based on the shots mapped up out all the movements of the aircraft and of the guy on the ground, like where they would actually be physically in the field. Uh, so that's exactly where my brain went <laughs> when I saw that. I mean, it's just like, and I love that that the person kind of like in the foreground is like, I got to get a shot of this. But yeah, like the not? shot is like, look left. It's coming at you. <laughs> yeah, I think they were just, just waiting patiently for uh, for it to go by. But man, it was, it, uh, it about knock your hat off when all that happened. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so, I mean, we could literally just look at photos all night, but I wanted to dig into some tips because, uh, obviously, not everyone's going to have, like, an aircraft that they can fly in to get beautiful shots like this with three steer steer men? Steermans? Steermen? Steer. steer. That sounds sounds right. Steermen. Steermans? Which one? I don't know what it is. All right. Well, whatever. There's three of them, and it looks epic AF. Uh, what? Like, let's start. What's like? What? What are your big tips for the folks at home who are 
who are wanting to just take better photographs because I even as like someone who's visually inclined I guess like I struggle when I go to Air Venture or another air show to get like anything even close to what you're putting out um, and someone actually asked this maybe it's a good place to kick off um, Gary Smith asks did you learn your photography skills by trial and error or did you take classes to learn them and maybe that's a good place to start that's that's a great place to start. Um, pretty well, 100% trial and error with a lot of help from friends mixed in there. No formal training, but um, I would say four or so years ago was when I really started getting into Instagram and started recognizing that there was a quite the community of people that were you know my age, younger, older, what have you, that that really had this same passion. Um, and that was actually why we pretty well, why we full formed uh, full disc aviation was just a way to, um, you know, kind of share, uh, share tips, share images, uh, kind of push each other and, and get better. And so, you know, it's, it's self-taught, but at the same time, I front row. Oh, where'd you go? Where did I go? Uh, stand by. Here, I'll show some pictures of things. Okay, sorry about that. No, you're good. So, while you work on that, uh... Okay. The, I mean, I think separately, like... <laughs> Freaky Night says, uh, 782 Papa. Yeah, a lot of weird technology stuff going on. Oh, there you are again. Here okay. I am. Different there camera, but this will work. Nice. <laughs> All right. See, that was quick. You were quick on your feet. All right. So let's talk about some of those practical tips, though, in terms of yeah, of what people can do. Where do you want to start? You sent me a couple images. You want to dig into yeah. that stuff first? Let's, let's pull up the uh, the ones with the the P fifty one. Oh, I put them in the wrong order. That's well, all right. We can start there. I'll, all right. I'll, I'll pick a different one. Uh, so uh, my first one. This is like this is stupid simple, but practice. Um, this doesn't come overnight. You're not going to get it figured out right away. Um, it, it takes practice and go out and shoot Cessnas just because you don't have a P 51 at your local field that flies every day. doesn't matter. Go find something that moves and shoot it because, you know, I would say 80% of what I shoot is motion aviation and airplanes aren't meant to stand still. So get out and practice. And the reason that I, I put this photo on here, this was literally the very first aviation photo I ever took. Um, it's the frame is not filled. I had no idea what I was doing, but by golly, I got a picture. Um, and, you know, really fast forward 12, 13 years later. And um, this, this was pretty well the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was funny. Marty yeah, says, leave it to the photographer to have a backup <laughs> camera just laying around. Uh, right as you're about to transition to the reveal, though. So this yeah. is the first photo. First photo I ever took, and then this next one is, like, one of the last Stearman photos that I have in my catalog. And it's my friend Austin. He He's an amazing pilot and was just going down, and he works from one wheel to the other down the runway. But, um, you know, that, that just didn't happen overnight. And, um, you know, like I said, through a lot of friends, a lot of, you know, setting goals and things like that of, of trying to figure things out. Um, you know, that's, I, I wish that that were just like a, you know, a, a simple tip to write down, but it's, it's really one of those things that I think gets lost in, in all of this is that it doesn't happen overnight and pay attention when people try to offer you, you know, assistance or, or tips or what have you, but just go out and, and shoot and you know throw out the bad keep the good learn from what was good what you did there and and move on to the next thing it, so that reminds me of that there's uh ira glass who's the host of this american life which is a, a podcast that's been it's probably one of the biggest podcasts ever it's a, actually a radio show uh before that and he has this great quote about uh, people who are artists and how you got into art because you have taste, you have good taste, uh, but you d don't necessarily have the skill to back it up. 
and the way to get good at what you're doing is to push through uh you'll be making this stuff and you'll be like i don't like the stuff i'm making and the only way to yep. like get good is to push because you know because of your taste that the stuff you're making isn't as good as it could be so the only way to get good and as to stick with it and push through all that so that you can over like your skill matches your taste and i don't yeah. know that it totally makes sense but even on that i would say your taste also um you know get more refined as you go along too because i can look Absolutely. back you know eight years ago at stuff that at the time i was really proud of and you know i look at it now and think well that, that's going to make for a good example to show somebody about you know exactly what we're talking about and um you know, just it's part of it. And, you know, I, I say all this meaning, you know, don't, don't be discouraged by, you know, not, not having the same shot as somebody else that's been doing it for a long time. And, and I guess the other side of that is just buying good equipment isn't going to, uh, isn't going to make it all right. You've still got to learn how to use it and, and have the eye for, you know, what, what looks good or what you like for that matter. Cause I, you know, I don't really shoot for other people. I shoot for me. And, um, it's, I don't know. That's why, that's why I enjoy it. I'm a recovering engineer by, uh, by my day job. And, um, this, you know, I live in a world of, of, uh, parallel and perpendicular, and this gives me a chance to do something a little bit, you know, a little bit off of that. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And I agree about the equipment. Uh, you know, the, I think the equipment only gets you so far, obviously having a monster zoom helps. Absolutely. But, uh, but if you buy the monster zoom and you don't know how to control your image, it's not going to, yeah, not going to get there. And, and you know, the other thing about somebody that doesn't have the monster zoom, get closer to the aircraft. I mean, that's the, that's the other side of it. Sometimes you do need that when you don't have the access, but if you do have the access, you don't need the monster zoom, but don't, but not too close, not too close. Yeah. That would be bad. <laughs> so let's talk about the. Well, this is the tip. Number two is this, uh, this is what you wanted to start off as the first yeah. photo. Yeah. Um, slow your shutter down for propeller aircraft. Um, we, you know, we joke that we started full disc aviation and that was the name of it. And, you know, the full disc is the term for when you've got a, a full disc of prop arc um, where, you know, it just looks like a disc sitting on the front of the plane. So, and so this is the before. This, this would the... be the before, and this was from I don't know, 2012, maybe something like that, when I literally had no idea what I was doing. But you know, at the time, I was really proud of this shot. Didn't know anything about it, but I was happy with it. Um, you know, fast forward to the next one that was a couple of years ago, same aircraft, different airport, but there's a lot different there. Um, there's motion. It's I you can't read the the label on the on the propeller like you could on the other one. And like I said, aircraft are meant to move. And if the engine's running, you know, do what you can to at least get some sort of motion. And it doesn't mean you need to go crazy, stupid, slow like myself and a lot of my friends do because um, anybody that thinks that we take these photos and it's a one-shot, one-kill thing, I've got news for you. Um, I hate to, to ruin the secret, but, you know, we're looking at quite often, you know, we're throwing away... 80 85 percent of what we took just due to things not being in focus um or not necessarily in focus but not being sharp because it's you know with a slow shutter the whole thing is that you want to track the aircraft be as steady as possible and you'll know, get the the background blurred the prop blurred but have the aircraft in focus and it's that's one of those things that really ties back into practice as well and also you know the working out and and getting the hang of of how to track a subject without, you know, jiggling up and down all the way. Sure. And I mean, in my the thing I tell people, you know, that get discouraged that, you know, it's not working out or, you know, I don't have anything around my airport to go shoot. You don't need that. Shoot your kids in the driveway or the cars driving by or whatever. Just get good at at a subject moving by and you tracking it, firing off a series of shots. And like I said, you're going to throw 80 percent away. But, you know, within the 20 percent, you've probably got something in there that's what you were looking for. And um, that's just one of those. And, and I don't mean that on a knock to anybody that, that doesn't do that because, you know, like I said, I, I spent many years not doing it, but just adding a little bit goes a long ways. With anything, you got to put in work. 
Yeah. Got to put in work. Absolutely. Uh, don't shoot your kids in the driveway unless with it's with a camera. Exactly. I, I should have clarified. <laughs> so, so a couple of questions after the so this shot in particular, some questions came up in the in the chat. Uh, one, someone made a comment before. Uh, yeah, thank God for digital. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Holy moly. Two, yeah. uh, seven eight two Papa's wondering uh, what shutter speed are you at at this shot? Not saying for sure, but I was probably at one over twenty five. So guessing. slow. Super slow for taxiing. Um, you know, with with takeoff, um, you know, you're probably looking at one over sixty. That's pretty well. I shoot most aircraft flying at one over sixty, and I should say this: this really just goes with propeller-driven aircraft. You can do whatever you want with with jets because they don't have anything moving on the front. Um, but but generally speaking, this was probably one over twenty-five, maybe one over thirty, something like that. But strangely enough, when they're that close to you, which this one was, um, you know, it's not that difficult. And if you've got a lens or a, a, a camera body that will shoot. Um, you know, in bursts of, you know, whatever. I usually shoot in bursts of three because what I find is the the first shot is catches my finger pressing the button down. The second shot is probably the best one, and then the third one is me releasing the button. So it's usually the one in the middle that's the the better. And um, but yeah, going back, this wouldn't be possible, you know, to do that with without it being digital. Um, I'm not a purist. I I recognize that, you know. Digital adds so much to to what it is, but that's part of the it's part of the tools in the tool bag. No, absolutely. And I think the other thing that for me, uh, I'm surprised to hear that slow. Like uh, that, you you've got no wonder you're having to like <laughs> to do some <laughs> do some working out to keep it. That's I mean, you've got in body stabilization, you've got things helping you. But like, I don't have any in body, but I do have an in lens stabilization that helps a couple of stops. But that's about it. Yeah, I guess that was my point. Is like you know yeah. some cameras have that stuff, but it's not gonna like bring you all the way home to that. I mean, you're literally working yeah. against the physics of light. Right. <laughs> at that. And and it's really it, the funny thing is is it's easier at least for me anyways to track a a moving subject than one that's just stationary. And I think it just has to do with the fact that the way that you pan, um, you know. It, after a while, you just you hone in on whatever that object is that you're looking at, and you just track on it. And you know, like I said, a lot of them will be garbage, but a lot of them wind up being keepers. And oftentimes, the closer you are to the subject, the more keepers you have. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about. I, I we're actually, dude, this is amazing. Uh, we're we're like almost out of time already, <laughs> but like, and I have. You sent me like a hundred some odd photos, and we're at like twenty-two out of a hundred. So hold on to your butts, everybody. It's gonna be a long night. I'm just kidding. So let's dig, let's dig through. I'm just gonna click through some stuff, and I guess what's your next big tip for folks? Um, uh, this one, I mean, this is just a beautiful shot. But maybe I can find some shots that match what the tips you're talking about. But what are what's the next big tip you have for folks in terms of their own aviation photography? So this one kind of goes along with the the simple concept of the practice, but it's be a good person. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but so much of what I've gotten to do is solely because of the graciousness of others to help that to happen. Because it's not like going somewhere and paying a fee. It's it's you know having good friends that you know recognize that you know there's an opportunity there and. Um, every single air to air shoot that I've been able to do has been because people are awesome and I really try to, you know, treat my friends right and, and return the favor with, uh, you know, uh, prints and things like that. I mean, it's the least I can possibly do, but you know, these guys here, they, they go out once a week and fly formation and, um, the son of the, uh, the guy in the back is a good friend of mine and he called me up and said, Hey, we're going to, they're going to go out and do that. You want to go up in the cub and, and, uh, we can brief and, and do a photo flight. Like how cool is that? That's and super cool. Doing, doing air to air stuff is, is every photographer's dream. And, you know, I just get, I've gotten super fortunate to have really great friends that, um, you know, that allow that to happen from time to time. And so that one right there 
is the uh, the Dreamlifter that um, accidentally landed at our GA reliever airport in oh. the night. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It, uh, Ooh. <laughs> that was when they were leaving. Not not the same crew that flew it in, believe it or not. I, I suppose those guys were getting debriefed. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, the other thing is you've got, you know, I think one of the things I picked up on with your work, too, is just, like, looking for details. Yeah. It, you know, kind of going back to the, the tip that I mentioned earlier about moving around, um, one of my one of my good friends James he he's the one that really kind of pointed out to me the what what we call the worm's eye view but where you get clear down on the ground I mean literally set the lens and the camera body on the ground and oftentimes we lay down and just get that full uh, depth of field of you know maybe it is a a dirty ramp with the aircraft parked you know 100 feet away with a long lens and it's just a it's a different view it looks looks really cool but most people wouldn't think to do that and uh one tip that i learned from paul bowen kind of illustrated here sometimes take your camera and just give it a little bit of a tilt um it it just adds a little bit of you know a little something different that photo itself I, as i edited it level didn't do anything for me but giving it just a little bit of that dutch tilt i i enjoyed it anyways others did too so I was just about to say, in the film industry, we call that a Dutch angle. There you go. But I don't know why. SoCal <laughs> Flying Monkey just showed up. He just got home from set. He knows all about Dutch angles and shutter speeds and ISOs and F-stops. Uh, <laughs> all those fun words. <laughs> uh, I wonder if he's ever told us a new kid on set to go get a bucket of F-stops. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's just click through a few more. I, and then we got to play short final. Speaking of short final. Yeah. That uh, was Doc's first flight right there. Doc's first flight. See, that's, I think that goes back to your thing about being kind and being gracious. Like you don't always get to grab first flights and. Yeah. And yeah I mean, like that's, that. that's exactly why I threw that in there was for that exact same reason. I mean, that was because of people being awesome to me that I got to go to that. I shouldn't have been there. Uh, SoCal Flying Monkey says he definitely has sent a production assistant for a bucket of F-stops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good. They deserve it. They need to earn their place. All right. Uh, dude, I could just click through photos all day. I'm just going to, like, zip through. You tell me when you want to stop with one of your with one of your photography lessons here. I mean, you got the, the Mars. I my grandpa. Grandpa people are important. Yep. Uh, is that 72 Papa says, is that like blinker fluid? Exactly. That it, it is like blinker fluid. Uh, this one, I think I've seen in a magazine somewhere, maybe. If so, it wasn't my shot that I'm aware of. Never anyway. mind. Uh, those were the last F4s. That was one of my favorite shots that I called Warbird Alley because it has the, uh, yeah. kind of the Warbird, uh, monument back there and the p40 in the front uh hey will who just uh said hi from nashville great to have you in the chat uh speaking of f4s yeah i'm trying to find that still one of my favorite moments from uh, from air venture funny part about that the uh, the one on the right you can barely see it in that shot but uh the uh the green one lost his uh his shoot right as he took off and uh, the door popped open and it just went clear into the tents at the end of the field. And, uh, he got a lot of static for that. I hope they got to keep the shoot. Uh, in the Navy, uh, it's bosun's punch or overhead buffer. I don't Okay. <laughs> See now I don't, I don't know what the joke is, but I'll, I don't I'll, either. I don't know what it is. I've got so, nothing there. So, and then you've got stuff like this, but there's one I want. Oh, here we go. We got to get to some of these like hardcore here. I'm going to, I'm going to skip through. Everyone just go, ooh, and ah, ooh, there's a steerman. This is out of a 172 or a, a cub or something. That was out of a bird dog, actually. Oh, it's a great photo platform. I was just talking to someone about the uh, my little like SkyFam uh, Facebook group here in Milwaukee about the uh, 
Marchetti modification of the bird dog that has a turban on it. Mm -hmm. I want one. Uh, anyway, I don't know, dude. We could click through these all day. It's such beautiful work. There, like, look at that. I almost swore. That one is so good, I almost swore on the feed. You're not supposed to do that, right? No, it's not advertiser friendly. There we go. Like, how do you get this shot? Like, where are you? What are you doing? I mean, like, did it hurt your face? Well, you should know. You've you've been at the tail end of that before. <laughs> that specific one, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, with those, a lot of times you just kind of have to anticipate that they're going to all of a sudden turn and pull hard. And as long as you can anticipate a little bit and pay close attention and be in the right spot, then that can happen. Yes. That, I mean, that's definitely part of it. Okay, so the bosun's punch thing was just explained. And then I'm going to skip ahead because I it, there's some photos I have questions about because there's a... A helicopter most people don't get to film in there go to the gear locker get me some bosun's punch they get there and the bosun's mate punches them okay All no right. one gets punched <laughs> no one's no one gets punched <laughs> with the bucket of f-stops they just get lost in the grip truck uh all right we're gonna skip through because there's something i wanted to i mean doc looking beautiful that's incredible i is one of your tips going to be about lighting getting up early yes actually um, I've literally outside of one time, I've never done one of my air to air shoots any time other than golden hour. And I don't, I'm not typically an early riser, so it's typically in the evenings, but there's just something about, about the, you know, evening and, and early morning light that just makes it all worthwhile. And there's, there's a lot of times now that, I mean, I've got close to a hundred thousand photos on my drive. I don't really want to go somewhere at two in the afternoon and, get a bunch of photos of flat light unless it's something that's really entertaining to me. Can um, you can you explain the golden hour thing to yeah. the folks that don't know? Yeah, I mean it's it's really the it's the last hour um before sunset and the first hour after sunrise. And I mean, you do this professionally, you can probably explain it better, but you know the concept is is that you know the sun is lower angle and it's kind of shooting through the atmosphere and Basically, the light just turns gold. I mean, that's where you get these awesome sunsets from. And um, it just, everything's a little bit softer. And it's just, I don't know, it's my, my preferred time. It's also cooler in the summer anyways. Absolutely. I have another question. Uh, you've got a lot of great photos of, like, exhaust heat. Jelly. How, how do you do that? Is there anything you got to do special to do that? No, you just literally, uh, you know, we talked about the slow shutter for the props. A lot of the shots that, that have the jelly like that, you know, since it moves around, you do want a fast shutter to capture that. Um, but really, you know, all these jets, it's just as long as you're, as long as there's something in the background, um, you're going to get that jelly like that. And, and in post, you know, in, uh, in Photoshop, you take just a little bit and, and sharpen it. And it really makes it pop. There you go. Photoshop. Uh, I actually planned that shot. This shot or the other yeah. shot? Yeah. No, that shot right there. We were out uh, working on uh, this kind of a production shoot for the, the B-Light chipper and had a handheld radio. And, and uh, after he made the pass, I was like, keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. And then we got the, the shot over the moon. And RIP chipper. Uh didn't their whole factory burn down? It did. That's very sad. Yeah, it was very sad. Whoa, and, uh, I just made it really small, and there's my head. Wow. It's like, right, it's like what an eye happened? patch. <laughs> We're on the technical, the technical problems today are abounding. Okay, here we go. I'm fixing it. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay, here's what I wanted to ask you before I get into short final. These photos, uh, can you take me to this place, and where is this place? Because... You've got this F-15, but then there's this photo, I think is in the same place, right? I'm moving it you all is. over the place in the screen. It here. is. Sorry. And you don't uh, see the this, this doesn't, you don't see, North American photographers don't see this too often. This was a, a lucky experience of being at Nellis Air Force Base for their air show in 2017. And the awesome thing about Nellis Air Force Base is it's got a mountain right behind it. So 
most of your shots are going to be landlocked and and have something behind it. And I mean, you talked about the the exhaust jelly. I mean, that's just it's what's awesome about it is that you've got texture. And um, I've I had never seen honestly at the time I never even heard of. I should have, but this is the uh, the hind uh, Soviet made helicopter, and uh, it was there from a museum and part of this uh, combined arms demonstration where they attack the field with the aggressors and then the uh, F-35s launch and the F-15s launch and the F-16s launch and it's just mass chaos all around the place. But that was where that one came from. Yeah, I mean, the the I thought this was like Star Wars Canyon or something. I, I've never been to Star Wars Canyon, unfortunately. We need to go check that out together. Yeah. Uh, all right, look, some jelly. I mean, I've got 50 more photos I could click through, but... That's going to be really bad uh, video podcasting. Uh, I'm wondering, would you be willing to play short final with me before we call it a night? Oh, there is. Talk about golden hour. Right. It's just a boring 172, but the sun made it. Uh, and then separately near and dear to my heart. Oh, I wanted to, this is something I wanted to, I wanted to, I was going to give a tip based on your photographs. Okay. And then we're going to go to short final. All right. So you got this awesome formation. You can tell it's golden hour because it's softer and kind of coming. There's a little bit of goldeny coming in. Am I doing a good job of explaining mm-hmm. your photograph so far? You are. But then it's all about which way you're facing. Exactly. This is why I sent these in this order. Kablam. Same two aircraft, same formation. Sorry, you should so describe what the it, heck not is me. going on back there, right? <laughs> and God came down from the skies and said, tail draggers are the best. Yeah. The cool thing about this shoot was it's uh, the father and the steerman and the son and the cub. Oh, and that is um, cool. just, again, really good friends and um, just the whole, you know, be a good person thing. Um, they've been awesome to me. And um, we just kind of went up to just do a kind of a practice shoot real quick. And this is what we got. That's a practice shoot. Uh, and then again, keep turning and you get, uh, well, I guess same same turning, but then play with your light. Second pass around. Get some different, uh, more dramatic uh, ways to do it. So I think, I think definitely like this, the first time I did air-to-air videography, I was not taking into account this difference. I mean, this is a beautiful photo. There's nothing wrong with this photo. But basically, like, I don't know, 180 degrees or maybe 90 degrees from you, you've got this photo. Right. Um, And that's something when I'm shooting video, the few times I've done it, you know, hanging out the side of a Cub or a, a 172, is like that stuff, figuring out, like, the sun, figuring out the backdrops, uh, in an air-to-air shoot, it seems kind of like uh, overwhelming because it's it, you're you're coordinating all this. Yeah, it's too. all there's so much going on all at the same time, and and you just kind of have to make make do with what you can. There, there's some people that can, are really good at planning ahead and know exactly what they're going to get, and you know I don't do air-to-airs enough to have that mindset. I always think about what I'm going to do, and then we get up there in a panic and just kind of you know just call it as I see it while we're going. But, um, ah, the wall of fire two years ago. Sorry. I'm just clicking through. I'm just clicking through while I'm trying to show everyone all your amazing stuff before we totally run out of time. Uh, let's play short final. You up for that? Let's do that. All right. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Frustrated. I'm frustrated how good your photography is. We're never going to make it to, uh, (laughs) <laughs> the short final all right are we on extended downwind right now yeah yeah we're we're we've extended hardcore okay let's play a game uh but not in that creepy horror movie way uh i've got some questions for you we're gonna play short final before we wrap it up tonight uh <laughs> bender's like omg i could just go back here here look at that guys yeah people are like wow look at these photos no one wants to play short final and our this felt poignant separately based on uh what's going on this year i think that's the one that they used in the magazine to advertise that we weren't going there this year which made Mm -hmm. me happy and sad all at the same time 
All right, people should go to your website and look at this stuff. And don't forget to look behind you. Okay, here we go. Short final. We're doing it. Angels sing. Yep, exactly, guys. All right, here we go. I'm going to play the dramatic music. I'm going to hit the timer. All right, Nick Morv. Tail wheel or nose wheel? Nose wheel. Ooh, favorite F stop? The two eight. Aperture of the camera. Two eight. Yeah, nice and wide. Canon or Nikon? Nikon. All airplanes should be what color? Chrome. Chrome. Wow, no one's ever answered that before. Favorite civilian Polished aircraft? Aluminum. What was that? Favorite civilian aircraft? 182. Wow, okay, cool, cool. Digging it. Worst airplane ever made? Jeez. Uh... Man, I don't know. All right, we can pass. Yeah, Favorite pass. airplane you've ridden in? Probably got to be Doc. B-29. Makes sense. Favorite Warbird? B-29. And the favorite airport you've ever landed at? Uh, ever landed at? I'll have to say Stearman Field because I've never landed at Oshkosh. Oh, fair. Okay. Cool. You did all right. You almost got through the list. You yeah. Got... Uh, I should have known that. That one always tripped me up even when I was watching the show. <laughs> what? What's that? that? Worst airplane. <laughs> oh, I never asked that before. I added that this first time. What's? I want to. I'm trying to create conflict on this show. Oh man. What's the what's? Because I got in trouble. SoCal Flying Monkey was on the show, and I was like trashing on the Piper Cherokee, and he was like, "Whoa, boy, chill out, dude." And I was like, "Okay, sorry." So now I'm trying to create conflict and ask people what their least favorite airplane they've ever flown is. I don't have a least favorite one I've ever flown. I can say that much for sure. I mean, I guess if it's got wings, right? Yeah, exactly. It's got, yeah. So T50, Mr. T51 says, everyone needs a piece of your work hanging in their house or office. Uh, I'm a big fan of your stuff. That's why I wanted to have you on the show. <laughs> uh, I, I guess before we sign off, is there anything else that you wanted to give in terms of advice for people who are trying to get into this or to uh, start learning how to do photography with aircraft what, what would you say um i would say feel free to reach out to me anytime i love helping people my parents are both teachers and um i don't i don't know if i'm able to impart anything that people have imparted me in the past i'm happy to do so um shameless plug check out the full disc aviation podcast and uh, we talk about aviation and aviation photography there so that's always a good place to go um fulldiscaviation.com um, lots of good resources things like that but that's probably my biggest tip is you know don't be afraid to ask people for help and um, you know a lot of times people are willing to share what they've learned so you might be able to pick up something in 15 minutes that took them three years to figure out themselves because they were too dumb to ask somebody I think I think that actually is the other thing uh, that's really similar in the film industry is that uh, you don't have to be afraid to ask. People are willing to share what they've learned, and then and then separately, uh, you know, yes is always the right answer to the question. I don't know if that makes sense, but it like, does. you just say yes, uh, or you can qualify it, yes, but. So like, if someone's like, hey, go get me a bucket of f stops. So what you should be doing, the test is, you should say, yes, what are those? Right? So that, you, <laughs> like, don't just run off and try to find the imaginary thing. Like, it's okay to say, it's okay to clarify, it's okay to admit that you need to be taught, because that's that's what we're all in it. Anyway, all right. I'm still learning. Yeah, dude, well, yeah, me too. I mean, I was talking to Mr. Flying Monkey in the after show, and, and uh, I learned a lot because he's the real deal. And I'm just, that he is. I'm a poser in the film industry. He makes like real things and I make TV commercials. So anyway, all right. Well, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to this thing. I'm going to just click through a couple others. Uh, guys, thanks so much for watching tonight. Uh, look at that. God. Uh, <laughs> Thanks so much for watching tonight, everybody. It was awesome to be back and to hang or fly with you guys. I'm sorry that uh, some of you had some technical issues, but it sounds like it was just on the YouTube side. And, uh, oh, 
Thanks. Thanks, Eric. He says, you're making something real right now. That warms my heart, buddy. Thanks for saying that. Uh, Nick, it has been an absolute pleasure to hang out with you tonight. And uh, let's try to get together once things get different in the world. Uh, I need someone to take a dope picture of me flying my uh, dope Cessna 172. So we can make that happen. I would look forward to it. <laughs> that would be that would be rad. All right. Cool, everybody. Thanks so much for watching tonight. Uh, make sure you tune in next week for Test Pilot Elliot Seguin. We're going to talk about, I mean, go look him up before next week. Dude, uh, dude crashed a plane into a building once. We're probably not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a lot of other <laughs> aviation nerd stuff. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be cool. Uh, he's maybe the most enthusiastic person in aviation. So anyway, all right, guys, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for hanging in, and we'll, we'll see you soon.